I've always been curious about these wallpapers, the fusion of the neonic and the retro kind. Oh, pretty amazing to look at. A pretty minimal, pretty simple. I thought this could be done in Photoshop earlier, but uh, now that we are getting a little more familiar and comfortable with Blender, they're of course uh, taking reference from this amazing channel. And so this is this is the video we're talking about. It, it's merely nine minutes, so let's try to recreate that and see how it is. What things we could do with it? Okay. deleted all the default elements we'll go ahead and start working on the base so the base would of course be our plane so let's let's go ahead and uh, add a plane that would be shift a mesh plane so here's our plane scale it to 8 We'll be dividing this uh, plane into segments, into certain parts. So, the, what, how, how we can do that is we can go to the edit mode for this very object. So, if you click on tab, that's edit mode, and if you click W, that would give us the option to subdivide. So, subdivide, here it is, and here's 30, 30 cuts, 30 cuts, both horizontal and vertical. So, moving on. Let's go ahead and add the mountain. How are we going to add a mountain or uh, structure to it? So it's pretty simple. So here's the proportional editing option. So we go to proportional editing, we turn it on, and then in this mode, we'll select random. Now we'll go ahead and select some points on the edge of this, this side and this side, because that's where the hills are going to be. So now we have selected uh, some the eight odd uh, points on both the edges. We'll actually scale them up. We'll click here, transform. So this will give us this option. While bringing this up, also scroll your mouse. That will give us the variation. Let us find the best one for us. This should be okay. Okay. Yeah, looks cool. Okay. Now, now the next thing we would be doing is uh, we would be actually extending this uh, thing uh, so that it covers the entire camera angle and the loop and the animation. Go to the object mode. We'll add add as Shift A. That gives us this menu. We can add multiple options from here. So let us add empty and plain axis. We'll bring this uh, axis to the most uh, extreme position here. So let's uh, select the empty axis and let's. Better go to this menu. This comes by N. If you press N, you get this option to transform the element. This transform is basically moving it uh, either in location, either in rotation or scale. So sc location, you have three dimensional axis X, Y, Z. And what we'll do is we'll just move it here. Okay. So our plane was scaled by eight. So we'll move it by eight. If, if you want, you can be precise and click eight. We'll add a modifier, a mirror modifier. So obviously the name it, itself should be plenty self-explanatory. What this is going to do is this is going to mirror this plane to this side. Okay, so that's the intention. So let's uh, select the plane. Let's go to the modifiers. Modifier again is uh, our. It's a collection of various variations, various ways you can manipulate the structure. So let's go ahead and add a modifier. Modifier again. We have to search for mirror. Mirror, mirror. We're on the wall. Mirror is here. So we want to move it in the X axis. So we'll just uncheck this and click Y. The object will select the object where which uh, it should reference. That was the reason we've created this empty object. If we click on empty, it extends it. Okay. It, it, as you can see, this entire thing has been, has extended. So this is what we're looking for. And now what we'll do is uh, we'll add a camera. Again, pretty interesting thing, right? You you have multiple cameras that you're disposal with <laughs> multiple focal lengths. Pretty amazing. So what you can do is just again shift A, add, and you have camera. So we have a camera, it's hidden here. So let's do one thing. Let's just bring it a tad bit up for now. For now. So we can see the camera. We have to move this camera to the edge, right? So again we have scaled this plane in factor of eight. Technically, if we move it back on the y-axis so that should be minus 8 sorry minus 8 so it's at exact uh, ending point you can see the camera it's pointing somewhere else right so we have to move this camera first let's give it 90 and the z-axis should be 0 actually now you can see it's uh, pointing straight let's go to the camera view 
that's pointing straight. You need to animate the camera movement. Uh, so it should be going from here to this this end. It's pretty simple. Just bring this timeline up. First, you need to select the number of frames. We currently, the total number of frames is 250. Let's uh, move it to 121. So let's go to zero frame. The camera is uh, sitting at the zero zero frame, and it's this at this position. Uh, we need to animate it uh, to the to uh, the location location of Y. Click here and insert K frame, and then come to uh, 121 frame in the location move it here and that should give us factor of 24 maybe so yeah here it is 24 so let's ins let's insert a keyframe now technically it should animate it animates again we need to extend plane we need it to make it infinite right so that we don't get to see this area this area blank we'll be just extending this plane uh, using another modifier which is called array modifier modifier let's minimize this go to the array modifier yeah. array so here's array okay for relative offset let's see okay this should be zero and here it should be one zero one yeah one is okay count 10 should be okay let's give it 10 so now you can see we have a long path but our camera animation just lies here so this gives us a good long perspective let's see the camera looks cool we'll of course be having a spear here for adding to the retro feel we'll also see how is it looping okay i think uh, we've got uh, the base in place we've got the camera in place this looks way too plain right this looks way too plain we can use this modifier which should be wireframe modifier wireframe my goodness looks amazing yeah, seriously my pretty cool right pretty cool come to this angle we can of course tweak with the thickness wow let's keep it like this and check the replace original we can uncheck this and What we'll do is we'll go ahead and add a material to it. Let's create a material for that. Uh, this will be our new material. We can change the base color to something dark. We can make it full metallic. Here if we see, we've got the metallic uh, plane over it. And now we need to add the neonic uh, light to these lines on it. We'll go to the edit mode. We'll create this uh, new emission. And on the light, we'll bring it to this light too. And under the modifier, we we'll go to the wireframe and material offset. So this is how it looks. It looks a little bright, so maybe we'll decrease this to just two, even one maybe. Let's go to the camera view. Let's see how it is animating. Just you can of course play around with the modifier. Here. Let's add one HDRI to it. Now HDRI is basically like a 360 degree photo, okay? It gives your uh, animation a real uh, lighting. That's what HDRI is used. So we have this uh, site Polyhaven. So you can search for HDRIs here. You can have your textures and models as well. Uh, let's go to the HDRI. So basically, this gives your uh, render animation. This gives the objects present in your uh, models, uh, the environment. It gives us this realistic uh, kind of lighting to it. So we are looking for skies because we need to bring sky uh, light to it. So we need a clear sky. We don't need clouds. We need a clear sky. This gives multiple gradients of lighting. I'm gonna go with this one. So here, download. We now actually need to add that HDRI to environment we have created as as the encompassing element. World settings here. If we click add this yellow icon here, that gives us the option to change the background. So here we'll be selecting the environment texture. We can open here this thing open image that's it you have you brought one hdri to this environment it's pretty now you've observed clearly this is giving this plane the most realistic lighting it seems like we have the primary source of lighting here if you zoom in and see you can see out highlights on the surface so that is what hdris are used for so coming back to our camera angle so we of course don't need these buildings uh, in the plane in our uh, camera angle for that we will need to work on a way to um, make changes to the position of SDRI. For that, we'll have to go to the shading area. Here, we need to select a uh, world. So here, we have our HDRI. So let's go ahead and add a node called mapping. 
This gives us uh, parameters to work on the transform parameters, basically location, rotation, and scale. We connect vector to vector. Now, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add a texture node. Here is search texture. If brought this uh, texture coordinate to the vector. Now what you can do here is you can go to the render view again. You can see we, as I'm transforming the X, the location is changing. So we need to move it up by, I mean, in the Z direction so that we just have the sky. We don't want the most natural color to the sky because that's not going to give the retro feel. That's not going to make it uh, more neonic. Uh, for that, we'll just go ahead and add a saturation. We have a saturation known for it. So that needs to come between these two elements. So we need to get hue and saturation. Move this color to here and I'll add this color to here. We can make the changes in our hue. Saturation. I'm settling for this uh, this uh, neonic or uh, pinkish kind of feel to it. So this is what we have arrived at. Uh, so we have our plane. So we also have the HDRI. The middle area looks way too plain, right? It looks way too plain. So what we'll do, we'll try to add certain bumps to it. We'll, we'll follow the same process we did for adding these big mountain bumps. make some changes in the rendering settings as well so we need to make sure how we enable the ambient occlusion bloom and here and here and then emission Let's see. yeah i think now you get it let's change the color now we are we are at something this thing we'll do is we'll add a spear here so that would give us uh, some shine that would be a uh, alco spear so here's our spear we need to bring that spear there from here to here. So in the y direction, we'll just move it. And we have the spear at the end, okay? So here, here's our spear. We'll just go back to the camera angle and I select the spear and I'm going to scale it. Now we need to, of course, add some shader to it. We need to add the emission shader because that is going to have it some neonic uh, vibe to it. So let's go to the material, let's new, and here it should be emission, and I just need to change the color to something. Under the bloom, I'm going to play around with some bloom things here. So we can change the wireframe values here. Okay, this looks a little more pleasing, right? And let's also change the camera focal length. 